One of those break-in victims is Donna Archie. These pictures you're seeing now show some of the damage done to Donna's home, which was invaded last night. As you can see, windows were smashed, doors broken, her car attacked as well. Donna is the chief executive of the Central Australian Aboriginal Congress. She'll be meeting with the Prime Minister in the next half hour. She joins me live now from Alice Springs. Donna Archie, thanks for your time. Before we get your view on how to deal with the, the broader issue, explain to our audience what happened to you last night as you were a victim of this crime. Well, it was it was very scary, um, Kieran. I've been living in Alice Springs for the last 36 years, and to be honest, I've never felt this unsafe and frightened in that 36 years of living in Alice Springs. So what I heard, I was you know, I'm on holidays at the moment, and so I was up watching um, a movie, and I heard this bang. And I immediately thought, oh, it's across the road. Someone's getting broken into. So I jumped up and I heard this second really loud bang. And I'm running down the hallway and, um, you know, I get to the kitchen and it's actually my window that faces the driveway and it had been completely smashed and, you know, pieces everywhere. So it was like front on air by air with two, um, you know, two very, they were, they, they were intoxicated. Um, they were screaming at me to give them uh, grog. They said, I want grog, give me your grog. Um, and, and they were being very, very, um, um, you know, like, uh, what's the word? Um, aggressive, very aggressive. And I had my my uh, son and daughter-in-law's dog with men. That was a deliberate, deliberate um, decision to do that because my husband was on his way uh, coming back from Adelaide because we got broken into uh, about four days ago. And so this is a second break-in. Uh, the first one was done by people just going through and rummaging through our drawers and things were everywhere. Um, just an absolute complete mess. And I think what they were looking for were either cars to, you know, key, key, car keys, alcohol and money. Um, but this one last night was absolutely about alcohol. So w when you look at the, the spike in crime and lawlessness that you are seeing, the worst that you've seen in, in decades of living in Alice Springs, is it... Is there a direct correlation with the lifting of the alcohol ban in a number of communities? Oh, absolutely. I have no doubt about that. We were predicting this. Um, we were predicting this back in, in May. We've been, you know, meeting with government. We've been putting our concerns forward, uh, both privately, but at times publicly as well. Um, so this is no surprise what's happening here to, to this town, this beautiful town of Alice Springs. Um, it has progressively deteriorated to the extent where, in my view, the situation that we've got now is not like it was when things were bad 10 years ago. It's worse. There's absolutely a crisis and something needs to be done immediately. And we know what, we know what that is. We know what works. We know what's caused um, this, this alcohol-fuelled uh, uh, crime. Uh, and so we need to put back in place the um, restrictions that were lifted uh, on the 17th of July last year. You've, you've lived there for decades. Um, it, it sounds like effectively living in fear right now when you've had two break-ins in the space of four days, including a, a very aggressive and quite violent one last night, do you are you considering leaving Alice Springs or others, your friends and, and associates considering leaving Alice Springs in the face of this crime wave? Oh, look, I've like I said, I've lived here for for thirty six years. My husband's from here. Um, we've had our three children here. Uh, they've grown up here, and um, and we've we've had in more recent times serious conversations about wanting to move. But we can't at the moment because we've got family commitments. Um, we've got our mother-in-law. I've got my daughter who's having her first baby. And um, so, you know, we're, we're committed 
uh, to mm. continue to support our family. But let me say, as soon as those commitments are fulfilled, if things haven't improved, um, we're, we're out of here uh, unless things get un unless things improve dramatically, because it is a yeah, crisis. There must be. It must be hard for you to, to say that as well. As, as I said, you're CEO of the Central Australian Aboriginal Congress. You've dedicated a lot of your career and life to try and improve the lives of First Nations people. What will your, You're going to meet with the Prime Minister in the next 10 minutes, I believe, via a, a Zoom link. So we're going to wrap up in five minutes or so. But what are you going to tell Anthony Albanese when you meet him this afternoon? Well, I think we need a circuit breaker for a star, and because of this alcohol fueled um, crime, as well as having kids down the street because, you know, it's not safe to them to be at home because there's, you know, um, alcohol being drunk and at levels that, that are causing them to get out on the street. Now, the um, combined Aboriginal organisations back in July last year uh, sent a letter to uh, a number of politicians, including the Prime Minister at both the Commonwealth level and the Northern Territory level, um, putting together a comprehensive strategy, uh, which includes things like an Aboriginal run diversion facility, establishment of a 24 hour drop in um, uh, centre and shelter, traditional ho um, transitional housing, uh, among other things. But there's no good investing in that if we're not going to actually deal with the cause of what's causing this crisis, and that is the actual turning of the tap on more. It's, it's, it's absolutely alcohol fuel, fueled. So we've got to put back in place what worked because it is a beautiful town. It was a beautiful town. We were like any other rural town in New South Wales. And I used to I travel over to, over to where my family are in Grafton. And, you know, you, you drive through and you'd say, oh, look, this is normal now. We're like, we're like any other rural town. And we, we have our ups and downs, of course, like everybody does, but this is abnormal. This is absolutely unnormal, abnormal, and something's got to be done about it, and it should have been done months ago. What, what do and you that say is to the Chief introducing Minister? Introducing those who, supply reduction measures that work. The Chief Minister said to my colleague Matt Cunningham this afternoon that, and she said it previously as well, that this is, she's not going to do that because it's a race based policy. What, do you, what, what will you say to her this afternoon? Because no doubt she'll be on that call as well. Well, what, we, what we've always said is that there's positive discrimination and it's called a special measure. So if you've got a majority support um, to a particular strategy and the actual strategy itself has maximum benefit means in terms of, you know, a, a good outcome, uh, outcome for the community, then um, it's positive discrimination. You know, it's just, it's, even if you discriminate against a small select few, you're actually doing it for the benefit of the whole community. I argue for the rights in, in the context of what's going on here now. What about the rights of children and women? You know, these children that are out on the streets, neglected, what about the rights of, of women who are getting, you know, bashed? The DV, you showed those stats earlier. There's been an increase in domestic violence, you know, um, breaking break-ins in businesses and houses. It's 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 got to stop. Yeah, and well, you you know better than anyone. The last couple of days, uh, yeah, our thoughts with you after that experience last night. I know I've got to let you go. You've got to go and speak to Prime Minister Albanese, who's just uh, arrived in Alice Springs. So thank you for your your thoughts, and uh, and I wish you all the very best over the coming days, and hopefully things settle down, Donna. Uh, thank you, Karen, for putting a focus on this too.